and I do want to establish that we have our quorum. So I'll do a roll call. And then um, before I do that, though, I do want to remind the public that given the unprecedented circumstances resulting from coronavirus pandemic, Governor Baker did issue an order which gave us relief from provisions of the open meeting law. And this uh, meeting will be conducted using remote collaboration technology. Problem, we'll go to our website and Katrina will give us guidance on next steps. So thank you. And we'll start with the roll call. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. Commissioner uh, Stebbins. Aye. I'm here. So um, we have established a quorum and we are calling to order the meeting today, public meeting number 77. Today is Wednesday, May 27th. <clears throat> about 10 o'clock and um, we'll get started with the approval of minutes commissioner stebbins sure thank you madam chair um, in your packet colleagues you have the minutes of the may <coughs> excuse me the may 13th 2020 agenda setting meeting uh, i would move their approval subject to any corrections for typographical errors or any other non-material matters do we have any questions for commissioner stebbins Edits, okay, hearing, seeing none. Well, um, do I have a, a second? I'll second. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Oh, Commissioner O'Brien, you're just muted. But I could read that. Now my space bar didn't work to unmute me for some reason. Aye. Uh, okay, Commissioner Zunica. Aye. And Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. And I vote yes. I'll set on minutes and we'll start with um, our notes. Uh, item number three, starting with our notes, administrative update for, we have of course this on all of our agendas for meeting June 4th. Karen? Yeah, uh, good morning everyone. I would suggest as usual keeping that on. Okay, and can we plan on um, a good report on both reopenings, casinos and office? Yes, I think the, um, so what we probably want to decide though is whether you want a separate agenda item for uh, the commission's uh, approval of the COVID policy or guidelines that we post for the, for the licensees. So I was looking at the calendar, you know, I'm thinking why don't we tentatively uh, put that for the 18th, uh, you know, we Theoretically, could do it a little earlier if we needed to, but that should give the um, the casinos enough time. If we need to accelerate that, we could, but at least put it on a hold for the 18th. Should we reserve time on maybe the 11th? Would it make sense to do a on the 11th? I, I think that would probably be a better date because it gives everyone a little more time. But I don't know if we had a meeting schedule. I didn't want to be presumptuous. Well, while we're talking, maybe Jamie, if uh, I don't know if Jamie is necessarily, she doesn't necessarily um, on, but I can find out if that would work for us. But we'll, we'll pl let's tentatively plan on at least a meeting that week that would really focus on that. Does that make sense, commissioners? I think it does. I okay. want to give people enough time. Right. And the fourth would be too early, but I feel like the 18th would be too late, right? Okay. The fourth wouldn't really work for you, right, Karen? I don't think so. I, we really want to get some best practices in and get some information from the other casinos that are opening now. So we want a little bit of time to figure out what those lessons learned are in order to bring that to the commission. Sound good, Bruce? Are you all right with that? Yes, I am. Okay, good. Enrique? Yeah. Thank you. And Eileen, all set. Okay, then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll shoot for the that week, the 11th, but we'll figure out a date that week. And I think that makes, that's on the reopening of the casinos. What about office? So our office plans are continuing to uh, uh, proceed and we're working in conjunction with the guidelines from the governor's office for executive agencies. So that seems to be going fine. I think, why don't we keep an update for the fourth? Uh, I believe that's the, the next meeting. And then at that time, we can decide whether you need some more information, because right now, the plan is only essential folks uh, would be needed. And so we don't, we have no need to open our Boston offices right now. So it, it is not as if we need to 
uh, have everything set to go to reopen the Boston offices before the casinos open. Okay, so maybe just in the update, you would, and you we can just- could. We could, okay. and also we, I've been meeting with the, the group and also Commissioner Cameron and Commissioner Stebbins, so they'll be able to, uh, if they wanna chime in on where we are, we could put an agenda item on the fourth if you'd like them to be included. I'll defer right. to the commissioners to see how they wanna handle it. Yeah, because I think that might be helpful just to educate everyone on what the executive offices are recommending so that uh, the commissioners can chime in, maybe make it a, an item. Can, Gail, what do you think? I, uh, I like that idea, and I do think um, our staff really needs an update as well. It's really important that staff members I've talked to have asked me, hey, um, what are we hearing about the office and commuting and all those things? And so I, I do think the fourth would be appropriate, and we could, yeah, I would love to say some things, and I know Bruce has had uh, direct input as well, so um, that would be helpful. Enrique? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that's, I think I agree. I think we should uh, at least uh, hear uh, some preliminary plans. There is the potential for incremental costs, and I know a lot of it is uh, in a state of flux uh, in terms of you know what it might look like and therefore how much more it would cost. So at some point, I don't know, I would be ready for the fourth. Uh, at some point, I think we need to contemplate what those incremental costs might be. So uh, to the extent that we would know some of those costs or be able to assess, that would be part of that discussion. Yeah, so, that or a future discussion. The point is that... Oh, you froze on me, okay? That's funny, we haven't seen you freeze, but you have frozen. He wanted I think, us to hang on his word. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we are. I'm guessing that um, his, his, the point is, is that it may be evolving, but the idea would be to at least on June 4th include an update um, that will be part of the agenda and not just the administrative update. Not to minimize the administrative update, but it allows for more voices. That's, okay. That makes sense. Okay, excellent. All right. I'm really hoping that we, I'm going to ask um, Mr. Grossman, do we have a legal issue if, if uh, Commissioner Zuniga <laughs> stepped away? <laughs> no, he's probably going to just join. So I think we can continue. Uh, we have our quorum. So um, moving, uh, anything else, Karen, for administrative update? I don't think so. I mean, that's the crux of what we're dealing with right now. So I can see as we go and things are things are happening. So uh, there may be some other matters before the fourth, but I can just add it at that time. Good. Okay. Um, Mr. Grossman, regulations. Yes, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you. And I'll fill Commissioner Zuniga in separately on this one. But we we do have uh, one request. This comes by way of the horse race committee. It pertains to a potential amendment to the regulations uh, that govern the racehorse development fund. So that's section 149.04. Uh, as you may be aware, and we'll certainly discuss further, and I'll invite uh, Commissioner Cameron and Dr. Lightbound to, to join me for this part of the uh, discussion, if helpful. Uh, the Horse Race Committee has been reviewing a new approach to determine the distribution percentage, which is otherwise known as the split uh, of funds to be distributed between the two breeds, standard bred and thoroughbred, uh, from the Racehorse Development Fund. Um, there's a regulation in place, the one I referenced, that discusses it, but really only allows for the split to be conducted in the, the present way or the so-called old way. And the proposed amendments to these regulations would give uh, the committee and the, ultimately the commission flexibility to perform the split either way, um, which gives uh, the committee and the commission the ability to make sure funds are distributed a little bit more precisely. And so the committee is actually scheduled to discuss this further next Wednesday, the day before the commission meeting but it would be helpful um, if we could place this on the commission's agenda um, in the event the committee recommends uh, an amendment to the regs. And I can certainly fill all the commissioners in individually 
um, in the next week or so as to the ins and outs of this proposal uh, prior to next Thursday. But it would be teed up for next Thursday? If possible, you know, the it's a, a timeliness issue in that when racing commences um, at Plain Ridge, um, we'll want to make sure the split is in place. And so there, there have been some concerns raised about not having this in place prior to that. Um, and historically, there have been issues with splits being determined after the racing season has commenced. So if the commission is amenable to this, and if the committee elects to make this recommendation, it may be helpful to at least tee it up for review on Thursday and perhaps even emergency adoption, just so you have that option uh, before you. Gail? Yeah, I think having the option is a good thing because I am wondering if the committee makes a decision on Wednesday if Thursday is enough time to get all the commissioners briefed on the rationale. So I, I, there may be, uh, that may be possible um, if it isn't um, too complicated, uh, the decisions of the committee, and I can only speak as one committee member. Um, but I, I think the option to have a vote is a good thing. And if the commission needs more information or more time, uh, we could push it two weeks, which I still think would be before racing and before the committee actually makes a decision on uh, on, on the split. Well, I'm fine with adding that in, but I um, will just jump out of out of line of uh, our our queue a bit, but want to return to this. But I do want to add for June fourth um, an update on horse racing. I'd like to understand what other standard bred tracks are doing. I understand they are opening around the country. I'd like to understand you know, what we're doing about timing. I know that there was um, a short, short discussion on extending to um, an uncertain time. And I think we need to revisit that. We need to understand about um, what it would take to reopen at Plain Ridge. Um, with respect to what PPC would do, what um, we have to do, and what the horse community um, would have to do to prepare the animals and to um, be ready. And then I'd like to um, go over also the uh, plans. Gail, you had asked for that on the health yeah. and safety plans, and they yeah. did submit, but we didn't really discuss that. And I have felt that we, we didn't, um, I know we made that decision, it seems like months ago, but it was only, I think, a couple of weeks ago. But we need to revisit that as, uh, as the um, horse community does start to engage without fans um, in other parts of the country. Do you agree, Gail? Oh, absolutely. I, I think standard bread is certainly behind thoroughbred. Um, and a few have, um, have, have, they have times to open, but uh, it's not a great percentage. Um, but yes, it is time to talk about it. We do want to be responsive. So um, we'll get to that, Alex. I know it was under review under this, but we'll want to bring um, those up. And then we'll have to carve out time next week, I think, uh, for that, because it will already be June 4th. Yeah, that would be wonderful. OK, excellent. Probably you were thinking the same thing. OK, good. Um, so that would also probably give more content, context to the regulation discussion as well. All right, but in, what we could do is, as Gail suggested, put it on for the fourth, at least to preliminarily discuss what happened on Wednesday. And then if we have to, we would have that extra meeting as well, maybe if we needed to act, which would give you another week. I don't want to start piling on to that meeting though. Okay, great. Sounds Thanks. good. All right, good, thank you. Karen, does that make sense for you? Karen? Yes, that's fine. Okay, good. All righty. Um, <clears throat> any other regs, Todd? No, that's it for now, thank you. And I'm sure it's all gonna be very clear. Crystal. <laughs> okay, it's complicated, complicated. Number three, please. All set for the fourth? I think so, yeah. 
That's I agree. I agree. We're prepared. Excellent. Looking forward to it. And do you know how much time we should allocate? Marianne will probably appreciate that. Half an hour, max? Max. Yeah, and, I don't and, think it's going to be a long discussion. And, and um, Eileen, do you think we need a vote for this? Um, well, I know the last time we talked about it, the other commissioners were going to be brief. I don't know what the status of that is. I think the other commissioners is, were updated is, in the interim. Yeah, is Carrie on? on? Hi, there she is, there she the is. unveiling. <laughs> I, th I think, um, I thought that this was, so this had been on the agenda in March, um, and mm -hmm. we were ready to go, we got bumped when everything started happening, and I think the plan then had been to just have an initial discussion, uh, and then potentially a vote the next time, so I thought that was what we were doing again well, now. We had actually then been on um, for last Thursday, and then we decided that with with everything with the monitor's report, et cetera, it was too full of a day, so we bumped it out. Um, so the question really is, if the if the briefing is sufficient to vote on the fourth, then we can. Otherwise, we can bump it out two weeks. It's not time sensitive, so either scenario works. So we have um, Maura from outside council joining us for the meeting. So. I would like I wouldn't need to notify her and she's if she's available for the next meeting. I would check both stuff. dates then with with her with Maura and then see which one works. Okay. And and could we schedule those uh, two by twos? However, we're going right. to do those briefings as well. Sure. And and Carrie would be conducting those. <clears throat> so are we talking about because we had done two by twos before the March meeting? Um, and the commission hasn't yet had a conversation about this that would have, the, the conversation that would have occurred in March. So is it just a refresher, the two by twos? Is that what we're saying? I guess any commissioner that was not part of Living It Live can ask to be refreshed. Otherwise, we can just move forward. Right. Maybe it's just, if you could ask each commissioner if they would like um, to be uh, briefed, perhaps recirculating the document now would be helpful and then if you check in and I'm sure it would probably be all of a half an hour Tupti and Carrie perhaps you would do that unless um, unless you need Mara but I guess perhaps the first step would be to confirm that she is available if you want her there for, for June 4th okay sounds okay. good yep okay excellent Okay. Moving on to item number four. Derek and Enrique, the budget. Um, is the Derek on? I'm here. Do you want to speak a little bit to that? With the yes. uh, Good morning. Good morning. Um, so we have our meeting with the licensees tomorrow um, to discuss our. Um, our current budget estimates and for this Friday for this coming meeting on the fourth I really see it as a conversation to see what they bring back as far as discussion we'll have a a short document that lays out what our recommended funding is compared to the previous year but it won't be the deep dive because we won't have been able to really um, take the recommendations from the licensees like we normally do work with um, uh, senior staff and figure out what we can and can't do, but we will bring all their comments back to the commission um, regarding what they thought of our first cut and what it looks like at a high level. Enrique? Yeah, that um, that sounds good. And then um, I went, um, we still would try to have a second or a subsequent discussion at a later meeting, uh, maybe for a potential vote and more of that detail. Oh. Yeah, we have it. That's the vote scheduled for the 18th. Right. Correct. So, so hopefully on the on the fourth we can have the discussion um, because you won't see the details on whether you want to have that vote on the 18th or have the 18th be a meeting where we give you the traditional um, package with updates that we were able to implement from the staff um, of the licensee recommendations. Correct. 
and then come back at the next meeting in July for a vote after you've had a couple of weeks to review the material oh. and get some public comment. Oh, sorry if I misunderstood. Okay. So we should probably think about our, our first July meeting is July 2nd, correct, Marianne? Sorry. <laughs> yes, July 2nd. And that should give us some time. I saw Mark pop in. That should give us some time to get some clarification around the research and responsible gaming budget, too. Yeah, we're having a meeting on that today, actually, later on this afternoon. So uh, there's uh, all these things coming together. Yeah, a lot of moving pieces right now to pull together for a package by the 4th. Just um, it's more it's going to be a discussion with the high level memo. And, and that's fine. One, one of the things that's going to be, um, I mean, I'm not covering anything new here, um, is that there's, even though the budget is going to sound, it's going to seem very much in line with last year, there's items that have decreased that we, we're managing because there's been some incremental costs, some of which we cannot, we don't control. So that's, that's the gist of the detail. Um, and, uh, uh, but it's just to follow the procedure that we've always followed, um, getting uh, that, that feedback and detailed discussion with licensees is, uh, is the next step. So I think we're all, we'll be all set for that schedule with the additional July 2nd meeting. Yes, the short of it is we're all set. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Can I, can I just confirm there's no vote? No vote for the, no on vote. the fourth. Okay. And no vote likely, vote. yeah, and likely no vote on the 18th unless the commission wants, has enough information from the meeting on the fourth um, to say we'll see the packet and vote on it on the 18th. We can evaluate that. It's always okay to reserve it, but. Uh, By the way, did we decide, and I'm sorry I cut off when I was talking last time, but did we decide that there's a June 11 meeting? Um, and if so, could the 18 then turn into the 20 something, the 25th? No, we're still gonna stick to, the June 11th will just be an, uh, an, um, an extra meeting to go over reopening for the casinos. Okay. So we have the, so we go from June 4th for budget to June 18th for budget to um, July 2nd for budget. Okay. But, the, but you did, we didn't get a chance to go back to the point you were making, Enrique. I was trying to think of something funny that I could, that I could say that we assigned you in your, well, in your absence, but I can't come up with anything right it now. It was uh, actually... I, I thought the worst possible time to turn off is when when you're talking over in these meetings. Uh, yeah, because it was a it was a good frame, and and yeah. Derek had a great line. Derek said he's left us. He wanted to leave us hanging on his words. So it's like I, I shut myself up in some weird reason. No, I actually had um, just in case people are curious, I had a number of files open on VPN. And I went out and uh, and closed those, and I was able to instantly. Oh yeah, you were competing. Sure. I was competing so, with myself. Enrique, Enrique, your point though that you were making was that um, you were raising the fact that with return to office work, because we are all working very hard now outside the office, there are likely incremental costs associated with, particularly the cleaning. Um, which would need to be heightened during this time and other costs. And so you, um, Derek is working on the reopening of the offices. So that may have to be incorporated into the budgetary considerations as we figure out the reopening. But that's why it's important to have that comprehensive discussion because costs may be rising and we may need to think about all of that, right? Yeah, no, it, it, uh, it's an important thing to consider, um, you know, as we, as we discuss how many people, what flexibility, if anything, et cetera. So, and, and, and that, those, that discussion means that your budget is gonna have to also reflect those, discuss, that, those new costs, right, Derek? Will you be bringing that up with the licensees tomorrow? So we, we haven't really gotten um, straight guidance. I mean, other than 
as many people that can stay home should be staying home. Um, and that's like until phase four of the governor's reopening plan and okay. the executive branch as well as, um, you know, they're recommending that for the quasis and the independents that are participating too. Um, but there will be some in-person services that have to happen. And for those to happen, we are required to have the appropriate sanitization, um, the appropriate supplies, and the supply chain is broken right now. Um, so the cost of these supplies has really gone up dramatically. Um, we, we were working with the building on what the appropriate sanitization would be. Um, you know, at first coming out of these working groups, it was at least four times. Well, through our contract right now, it's twice. So we would have to pay for two more um, in, the, in the high touch areas. Um, so Joe and I are trying to get a price on that, trying to get a price on what's appropriate. Um, and then is it four if you have 25% capacity or is it four for full capacity? And then you've got the cost if you do have a, um, a actual case of COVID-19 in the office, you have to shut down and do a full deep cleaning. Um, you know, and these guidelines are coming out and through these working groups. So we'd love to share with staff, but we really don't have the finalized stuff yet because everyone's trying to work through it. Um, and the price we got from the building for that is over $5,400 per instance. Um, so, you know, as you start adding those up, you can see why the guidance is to keep as many people home as possible if they can do their jobs from home. Um, but but, but we'll have that for you and in the updates. We, we haven't built those into the budget yet just because, I mean, we have supplies built in and we um, boosted up the supply line a little bit. But as far as additional lease costs for the cleaning that the building would have to do, we haven't done that because we don't have a final number or a final number of cleanings, additional cleanings that would be required. That's really helpful. It's also helpful for me to hear. I'm not sure if others knew that it was actually phase four. So that's helpful. And then secondly, um, I want to make sure other commissioners ask any questions of you, Derek, but I think just raising it tomorrow with your your meeting with the licensees that this is of course a fluid discussion is probably yeah you know fair to put them on that that's an alert you know these but and, that and like I said those discussions may change as these working groups change yeah. and as new information comes out but right now with all the additional costs um, the precautions to get into buildings no getting people over um, transportation um, adjusted schedules, queuing to get up into elevators. It's, it's, um, it's rather daunting. Well, we're lucky that we have, you know, integrated in with that resource through HRD because it would have been really complex. So good work. All right. Any more questions for Enrique and Derek on budget? And for anything for tomorrow's discussion with the licensees for them? Okay. Alrighty, um, moving on to um, the um, enhanced uh, ethics update. I'm working on my revisions. I know Todd's worked on his with Bruce. Uh, June 18th, probably, I'd hoped uh, to impose that on myself. It's probably optimistic. So I would like to at least move it to, um, I'm gonna say, June 25th is um, Community Mitigation Day. Um, it's gonna, it would take some time to go over. So if we could have July 2nd, that would be great. If Bruce and Han think that's okay. There's no other way to kick off July 4th. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Kathy, I think you skipped over item number five. Oh, I did. I'm so sorry. Because I, you know, I saw budget year. So sorry. So budget uh, item number five. Uh, uh, Jill, thank you, uh, Bruce. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, an, um, Executive Director of Mass Cultural Council, Anita Walker, is all set to update you on the two programs um, that are a result of the um, casino revenue. Uh, the Casino mitigation grants and a new safe harbors program. Um, 
which is um, a program in light of the um, cultural organizations and the challenges that they have faced during um, COVID-19. So Excellent. I think so we've got her scheduled for first thing. Does that still work for Anita? Yes, thank you very much. Good, and I'm sorry, I, I looked at budget discussion budget year. So now item number six, budget year 2021, we have that scheduled for the 18th for a vote. And that was what we just discussed. I don't know, I guess we just used a different, but it means for discussion, year vote, but we'll just keep it discussion. Yep. And then. And then the July, early July for the final be, vote. And, and we should call that the final, the budget year 2021 vote. Okay. On, on, really in early vote. July. Actually for July 2nd, but we, it's really a three part discussion. We can just use the same. My eye went over it. Um, okay. Number seven, we just dealt with. Number eight, we're starting in with our community mitigation fund presentations. This would be group one and we've got it down for a vote. Joe and Mary? Um, yes, and actually before we go into community mitigation fund, um, I just wanted to add one item in for the 18th meeting. We wanted to have something on for the PPC relicensing. So, um, you know, because as... Joe, did you need it for the fourth? I'm sorry, I should have asked that. Um, actually, I thought maybe just in the administrative update, I can give two minutes because we're expecting a big tranche of information on uh, June 1st, and we'll have had an opportunity to go through that and saying, all right, you know, they're, they're making progress. Uh, we're expecting the final uh, tranche of information on the, uh, on the 15th of June. So on the 18th, we're hopefully, we're, we'll hopefully be reporting that they've submitted everything that we need. And then at that point, we can have some kind of a vote and I'll have to work with Todd on what that vote's gonna look like, you know, to say that it's a, the application is sufficient and so on. And then we'll wanna work on a schedule for final approval, you know, for public hearings, et cetera, et cetera, on, on the license renewal. So if we can get a line item in there for the 18th, because I think we'll need to take some action on the 18th since there's meeting. <laughs> And Madam Chair and, and Joe, this is Loretta. If I could uh, jump in a moment. At the last meeting, uh, we also spoke about a request coming from PPC regarding the renewal fee, a request to adjust the timing of the payment of the fee. I spoke with PPC yesterday. That uh, request is going to come uh, forthwith. Uh, I wanted to check on any statutory requirements. Attorney Grossman and I had that conversation yesterday afternoon. So my suggestion is that you put that item on the agenda for the fourth. Okay. Uh, I believe it would require a vote because the payment of the fee is now a prerequisite for the completed application. So we'd want to work our way through through that um, uh, as we move forward. So why don't we have on the fourth then um, a separate item, Joe? You can do your quick update, yep. and then we'll move into the request regarding the the fee, and then um, you can we can recognize at that time that we'll be taking action on the 18th. We we'll yep. need to take action on the 18th. Um, if you needed more time, we can go up to the 20, is that the 23rd or could we go on the 24th even? 24th, I think is technically the expiration date, so. It is, it would be, so it'd be um, midnight, yeah. So we would wanna be no later than 23rd. Correct. All right, so that would give us a little cushion for anything that we couldn't address on the 18th. And, and I think you know, the, the, the commission can say, you know, I mean, if we had one or two things that were missing that were forthcoming that were, you know, we, we could still determine the application was sufficient, potentially, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and, and saying, hey, we're going to get that in a week or two or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, but at least uh, if by the 18th that if we really had something that we, we said, but we really want this wrapped up before the 24th, we'd have a little bit of a cushion, which I right. like, just yep. gives us that time. Okay, so the fourth. Karen, does that work? Yeah. Yes, that's fine. 
Okay, anything else on the, um, Todd, on relicensing? Anything else that you could think of? All set? We're all set? Yes, yes, um, I think that's fine. It, the IEB does have one other item for the fourth, a quick item, uh, a determination of suitability for an MGM qualifier. MGM? Yes. I'm sorry that I jumped on um, without asking everybody on the June 4th. I'm out of rhythm. So, uh, Marianne, were you able to get that okay? I see you nodding your head. Is there any other item from any other um, division staff member for the floor? Uh, I just wanted to, um, are we going to go ahead and put something on that agenda on the 4th for reopening of Plain Ridge? Yes. Okay, yes. Um, I'd like the items, we can talk about it more precisely. This looks like a pretty long meeting that we're developing now, um, but we need to get this work done. Yes, and um, Penn has uh, come up with their um, plan and they've uh, sent it, you know, distributed it to me and to the horsemen. So there's a, a new um, draft document that we can discuss at that time. And I would like to really discuss timing um, because we, I, I'm, I, I don't know if others feel like I do, but I'm uncomfortable with it being so uncertain right now. So good, June 4th, Gail? Yes, that's appropriate. Okay, excellent, okay, excellent Alex, thank you so much. Thank so you. So we'll, we'll, that will be a, 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 a comprehensive discussion we're going to get to a lot of your items under under review May, maybe most of them will come up into the june 4th agenda alex but that will be on june 4th any other item for june 4th okay now moving on to the 18th community mitigation back to you joe and mary Okay, yeah, uh, we're on target right now. We just started our, our um, evaluations this week and we have a pretty intense schedule of meetings over this week and next week. Um, it's my target uh, to try to get information to you folks by the 12th, by the Friday, because, you know, as you probably remember from years past, it, it is quite voluminous and uh, so I'd like to get you, even if I don't get you the whole thing on that Friday, I, I want to get you at least a good chunk of it so you have a little extra time to review that. So putting the pressure on myself to get it done. So logistically, I'm going to ask the question I'm sure that all of us commissioners are thinking about. I've only done this once before, but the, the documents were in paper form in a big, 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 big notebook. Um, Enrique is smiling because I think that Jamie says one of her best tricks was when she said, oh, you, when you close the book and said, I read them all. And Jamie said, oh, but that was last year's. <laughs> and you, but, uh, it, took me, it took me a year to read them. <laughs> no, I, uh... how, how, how commissioners would you like to receive this documentation? Because um, are you going to be comfortable if it's electronic? My, I, um, in, in my opinion, the memo that used to come in the, you know, in the, at the beginning, which was, you know, some 20 pages, uh, uh, but uh, it was a fantastic summary. Uh, a lot of the documentation that follows uh, is, is a lot of details that, um, you know, back and forth information with, uh, questions and uh, that, that, that we, I think we have to be able to rely on, um, you know, the team, the procurement, uh, the, um, the evaluation team. So I think I would put that at, as an optional, maybe consult it online, uh, you know, on the, on the share drive or um, certainly electronically. But um, those, in my mind, those are two very different uh, sort of documents. Yeah, I think, you know, Last year, we did streamline the process. Two years ago, we, it was extremely unwieldy with the amount of information that, that was out there just because there was so much. Um, last year, we did do a, what we called a summary memo, which was still a, uh, a lengthy document, but it, 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 it captured everything. So what we may end up doing here is sort of 
two summary memos, one for, for the first part and one for the second part. I'm, like I said, I'm not sure I'll have everything done for the 12th, but I want to get as much to you as I can so you have that to look at. Um, and then what we can do is, uh, and I'll defer to Mary on this, but I think we can set up something in the shared drive where we can put all the backup documentation and make sure everyone has access to that so that uh, when you're going through the summary memo, if if there's something that doesn't uh, feel quite right about it or whatever whatever it is, or you want to delve deeper into that particular subject matter, we can set up probably a folder maybe for each project or I'll work with Mary on, on what the what that'll look like. But I, my thought is if we had a folder for each project that you could go into and then look at the particular backup documentation for that individual project that might be the easiest way to do it. Mary, any thoughts on that? <clears throat> yeah, um, that's pretty much how the files do get set up eventually. So there, we've got the basics already set up for that. Usually what we do on the first meeting is uh, we put in the packet the uh, request for supplemental information and the licensees responses. The commissioners have already received all the applications and they've been posted on our website. We'll additionally be posting the response letters and the um, the uh, supplemental information requests. Uh, I'm trying to think. So the applications are all on our website. I know that they've been, we've been yes. getting the emails. It just will be a, probably a little bit harder for each commissioner to gather all that together. You know but they could go online for the applications themselves yes. on the website. Yes. Maybe yep. that's just an email for short, sort of pointing us to the right direction will be helpful for that guidance. Sure. But the summary will be, um, I like the idea of the summary and then being able to go to the shared drive for backup. But if it's already online, don't shift it to the shared drive as long as we know where to find it, you know, the applications. Yeah, so we can put the majority of the information right on the website so that any information we've received will be up there from the comment letters we received and everything else. Um, in the summary memorandum itself, we put prior, before the analysis, we do put the uh, response letters from both the licensees and Mass DOT. So that'll already be in your memorandum. We also, <clears throat> generally we do not vote at the first meeting. We wait until we've done all the applications. Um, and the reason being, especially this year, is there's going to be a lot of deliberation regarding, uh, especially on Region 1, because the requests have been so much more than what we actually have to distribute. Excellent point. So, Marianne, what we can do is, with respect to budget and community mitigation, maybe have, just, you know, actually enumerate number one, number two, you know, so it's a continuing discussion. Um, for our, our notes going forward, but we would just have the vote at the end. Um, if community mitigation spills into a third meeting, we'll have just the vote at the end. Yeah, I think I, I would like to maybe reserve some time on July 2nd, just in case. Yeah. Um, you know, we have 37 applications to go through, which is uh, at least 50% more than we had last year. So uh, I think that's, everything goes that's nice and smooth, but we just never know. I think that's really smart and, and also it's just harder when we do things virtually. So, you know, when, to concentrate. And the truth of the matter is, uh, my fellow commissioners, is that we, we can take a break from a virtual meeting too. So if we have a long one, you know, let's just agree that um, you can, if you need a break, you can immediately chat and we can, we can do that or we can plan on a break too in our agenda. So I welcome that input from you now or, you know, as you look at the agendas going forward. Even yeah, if maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe the, the community mitigation review might be the first ones where we structure that, uh, you know, or at least plan on a, you know, on a break after, I don't know, for a couple right. of hours, an hour and a half. Somebody may need to make a fluffer nutter for their kindergarten. Oh, just so everyone's aware, I have to hop off for part of the 18th anyway. We've got a fifth grade virtual graduation late morning lunch. So I'm going to be missing a chunk of time around 11 and 1230 ish anyway. So, oh, okay. So, 
Um, well, let's let's think about that when we order it. Um, when we yeah, uh, I was going to say if there's some of the smaller things we've if we could front load those to make sure I'm there. Marianne, can we coordinate with Commissioner um, Brian on that? So the uh, um, from 11 to 12:30, we'd be glad be to. Shorter than that, that's what we've been told to hold. We're not 100% sure, but that's what we've been told to hold. Okay. On the 18th. On the 18th. Can we attend? <laughs> I don't believe so. I think it's going to be very closely Zoom controlled. Yes. <laughs> but I can tell you all about it. So we'll look for that update. <laughs> That can be at the end of the meeting, your commissioner update. Okay. Because um, I don't think you'll want to miss a lot of the community mitigation because that builds, you know, on the, the uh, dollar. So we'll work around, around that. Um, the PPC renewal vote too. So that I would be, depending on how concise that is, um, that would, I would want that front loaded if it's possible at the beginning before you leave. Got it. Right. right. Okay. Uh, Joe and Mary, can you work with Mary Ann just to estimate once you have a chance to think about the amount of time? And then what we might do is is start and then break for Commissioner O'Brien and, and for ourselves. Um, and then if we return to some of our more succinct matters in Commissioner O'Brien's um, absence, and then if we need to finish up with community mitigation at the end, that would be okay. Yeah, that works for me. I mean, I've, I've got my whole day open around commission meeting, so. Great, great. And just, you know, in terms of structure, we'll just try to be, you know, really careful that um, it makes sense for us. Okay, um, in terms of just being able to keep track of the details. Anything else on number eight? And so that will be part one of three. Okay, then uh, Mark on forms of gambling paper. Hi, uh, good morning. That's good morning. not a great description of, of uh, what will be presented on the 18th. Um, so our Sigma team um, has published a uh, um, article in an academic journal uh, BMC Public Health, and the, the title of, of that article is Gambling Formats, Involvement, and Problem Gambling. It um, uses the uh, baseline general population survey data as well as the baseline online panel. So uh, two um, surveys that were fielded before the opening of casinos. Um, but it specifically focuses on forms of gambling, which types of gambling um, are more uh, closely correlated with risky gambling. Um, I think it sounds like a, a great presentation and an important topic. So um, that journal is, the, the article has been published um, and I will go ahead and, and forward that to the, the team. And will that journalist be presenting it or will you be presenting it, Mark? Um, uh, Dr. Volberg will be presenting. Oh, it's, it's, it's okay. He's one of the principal investigators on. on oh, okay, great. And then um, you'll coordinate with Marianne in terms of scheduling. Correct. So we're going to have the budget, community mitigation, and Mark's presentation, any other, and then um, PPC license, relicensing discussion, anything else on the 18th? Did I miss anything, Marianne? Those four items? Uh, no, I think PPC renewal. That will require, a, um, we'll, we'll put vote for the 18th on PPC renewal. So that we will have just a few days in case there's something outstanding. And then those items, anything else from anyone um, from the members of the staff or Karen for the 18th? Not for me. All set? Okay. Good. If you can just uh, everyone work with uh, Marianne because we do want to accommodate Commissioner O'Brien. Moving on to a uh, number 10 now. 
that's scheduled for June 25th. We'll keep a vote off at this point because I suspect we'll want to go on to July 2nd. If we need to attach a vote, if we get ahead, we'll make sure to include it in the agenda. But that would be part, part two of three. Okay, number 11. That's a total mitigation meeting. It's a second of, of three. Right, and it's just mitigation. There's nothing else on there. Yeah, that's correct. Oh. That, that, that meeting is just dedicated to community mitigation fund, which is why we're hopeful we will get through it. You know, that I think- Oh, uh, that's right, it's a seven days, yeah, thank you. You know, so I mean, it's really gonna come down to, uh, you know, you know, I mean, how, how long the presentations go on and how many questions and answers there are and, and how comfortable uh, you folks all feel about, you know, how long you want to go with the thing. Like I said, I've got the whole day booked, so. <laughs> That's right. So, and I can talk forever on community mitigation. <laughs> <laughs> Mary's smiling. <laughs> so, I'm not sure how much time we've put on June 25th for the commissioner's calendar. I know that we probably have limited it because of the idea that just virtual is difficult, but maybe if we did two hours in the, the morning with a break and then two hours in the afternoon or three hours in the morning with a break and then another hour and a half in the afternoon, let's just see how we do, Joe. Um, but we'll, we'll, we should put, um, then we'll just keep July 2nd you know, loosely. Yeah, my thought was that July 2nd is just, I just wanted to have a little time reserved there just as a fallback in case yeah. we didn't get done. Um, well, and also in case we have questions from our June 25th that you need to follow up on. I think yeah. that's what I'm wondering about. Okay. Hey, Joe and, Joe and Mary and Kathy, um, have, we, uh, have you figured out the order uh, whether, or the grouping of uh, the, the ones the requests that we're going to see at different days. Uh, it, it's just that uh, there are some that are a lot more straightforward in my mind and others that are a lot more of a judgment call. You know, uh, we haven't really thought about that, but just I think a little bit maybe on the first day we might want to do a lot of the easier ones just to, to, to sort of ease into the to the process a little bit and because there's a number of other things on that uh, uh, agenda for that day, and then that leaves us on the uh, on the the second meeting, uh, dealing with some of the the more difficult ones, or some of those ones where we know we have we are fiscally constrained on what we can give out, and you know there's going to be a little bit of back and forth on you know who gets the money and who doesn't get the money, um, and and that's going to be probably those are going to be. Um, a little bit difficult discussions at points in time, I, I would imagine. So I think that's at least my initial thoughts is let's try to do the easy stuff on day one and then tackle the, some of the tougher stuff on day two. And then that leaves us a third day if we really need it. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Okay, so June 25th is not a regular day. I'm remembering that. Thank you, Marianne. And so no more items on June 25th, but we are into July 2nd. We have, right now, Marianne, if you can remind us, right, uh, for July 2nd, we have the ethics. We've got um, community mitigation. Community mitigation, yeah. Uh, the budget year 2021 vote. Yep, that would be the final vote. Right. And then that's it. That's it. So we'll go through what's under review um, and starting with the use of delinquency info. This is a a discussion, Todd, with respect to potential change in the regulation or clarification in the regulation? That's right. You'll recall it came up as a, a part of a public comment in the sealed record section. It's just a placeholder at the moment. I don't believe it's time sensitive, so we can just keep it under review for now. Okay. 
but it's not necessarily even it's mainly for discussion as opposed That's to right. a right yeah. it's a policy discussion yes it is yeah okay Jill, workforce development grant update number 12. We could actually take this off the, um, uh, the off the list. I don't have any um, updates at this time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Number 13, number 14, number 15, number 16, number 17, Alex. Hi. Um, yeah, if, um, we could either put those maybe on the 18th or I guess the other um, possibility would be beginning of July. Is, is the so, 25th not a, that's well, filled we've with. Got, we've got horse racing on for June 4th now, right? Right. Uh, are any of those items, are any of those items appropriate for June 4th? Um, I mean, we could possibly do the um, recognition of the standard bed owners. Um, you know, that's just going to be a brief presentation. Um, the other items are all things that um, would come up when, you know, closer to when they're going to reopen. And some of them may change because, um, you know, when they, uh, I'm not sure if the same racing officials are going to be available that they, um, put on back in um, March. Um, so can, I, can and I ask this question? If it turned out that horse racing were starting sooner than later, would we be behind to not have addressed 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 earlier? Um, it depends on what, what you mean by earlier. Um, I mean, those oh, items can all be, as long as they're done a, a week or two before we open, they're, we're fine. Just need that much. Okay, that was really, yeah. should have asked it that way, how much runway. Number okay. 13 asks about requesting to race in the Finger Lakes in New York. Is that still a live issue? It's, it's still a live issue. We've um, been in discussions with them about where they want to um, do the races, and they're just not um, ready at this point to bring it forward. So. Okay. Alex, I think it sounds real? like, go ahead. No, I'm sorry, Alex, any big changes on the, the racing officials? Item number well, 14, is that different? I, I don't know that there are any because that, you know, that was a list that was um, done in March and, and, you know, I'm assuming that their officials are coming back just like I'm assuming our seasonal staff will all be available um, when we do reopen. But um, as you know, right now, um, you know, Steve O'Toole is um, furloughed um, uh, and Chris McElaine is, you know, doing the stuff at the higher level as far as trying to come up with the reopening plans and everything. Okay. So, you know, I, I don't know if um, once um, they get closer to reopening and they um, hire their seasonal staff back, if Steve will have some changes to that or not. So. This is why this um, is an important conversation for the fourth because I'm not really sure if I understand exactly who's driving the bus here. So in terms of does the horse community and the racing community wait for PPC to make its decision on the casino reopening or are they independent? Or could they be, or are they combined? And so I'd like to understand that better um, because the fact that somebody is furloughed um, shouldn't be what you know what tell what really informs our decision making. We really want to understand what should what the right you know policy and you know decision is regarding when horse racing should start. So I'm looking forward to the discussion to understand that inter the interplay between PPC and the horse community. And, and, and that there may be legal considerations, Todd. I think uh, Karen may have raised it with you. It's a question as to, I know that um, there's a condition to the license and I just wanted to understand that more in more detail. So, yes, and there uh, around the country, there have been uh, different, of course, you'll have to you know, look at what happens in Massachusetts and what's appropriate 
here, but around the country, there's been all different um, scenarios. There's right. been some where it was tied with the casino. There was times when it was going to open after the casinos, and there's been times when they opened before the casinos. Right. And of course, we have to look at the guidance from the governor's office. That's, that's Exa exactly. Office. So we have right. that as an overriding. Then my question would be, is, is the opening of the track tied to the reopening of the casino? Or could they be separate? That's really, uh, you know, it's a, both a question in terms of health and safety of all involved, but also, uh, I think, a legal question. So. And it's an economic question. Well, then that's, oh. that's, that's, that's interesting to me that you said it's an economic question because I'm not sure if it's an economic, I assume it's an economic question for all. Correct. Yeah. So let's start with June 4th and uh, get fully in, informed. Gail, do you have anything that you're you know, closer to this than I am? I'm asking a lot of questions mainly because I feel a little bit um, I just want to be further informed. I'm glad you're asking because um, it lets me know that all the commissioners are not clear on the dynamics here. And they are, um, frankly, unprecedented conditions. So right. there's not a clear roadmap, but I think the more we talk about it, the more information we have, um, the better informed we will all be. So our decisions will be with the best possible information. Do any of the other commissioners um, have any questions that they want to make sure are addressed on the fourth with respect to horse racing? And I can get back to Alex and, G and Gail, of course. Anything further? Eileen, you've mentioned the Finger Lakes. That seems to be evolving, but we'll want to know about that to the extent also that plays into the purse discussion. Right. Which is, the purse discussion is scheduled for the fourth as well mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the regulation that Todd proposed. So, okay, thanks, I appreciate it. Help, I, it help me. Can I just confirm, are we putting the standard owners of mass on for the fourth or no? The recognition request? I think what we can do is get back to you um, as to how to frame out all the agenda for horse racing. But right now, I think you'd like to keep pretty much everything that's under review, Alex, under review. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank but but the, um, there'll be some of those more just really to understand the, the decision making mm -hmm. on, on June 4th. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Getting through, guys. Um, number, am I right? Number eighteen, Game Sense Impact Report. Elaine and Mark and Teresa. Um, yeah. Uh, so I think both of these are on track to be presented in uh, July. Um, I don't think the first meeting in July, but perhaps the second meeting in July. Um, we could go ahead and assign a date to it. Well, um, that's fine. I just want to also point out that. As everybody knows, Elaine Driscoll has exciting prospects in right to be happening. Um, she's not, I don't see her right now, but is it possible that she would be able to be part of the discussion in June, given her work on this? Or sure. does no, actually it's my full intention that Elaine that, that we cover this before um, Elaine's departure. Um, and so maybe I'm just not fully aware of what that that date is, but absolutely, um, I'd like to get this rolled out before then. Okay, so let's just say um, it's either the 18th or um, the 25th is a special date, so we're looking at trying to squeeze it into our busy 18th day, and if necessary, we would shift it to the 25th so that she could be included. The 25th of July? She, she, um, her, her last, um, I, I, I'm speaking for Elaine as if she couldn't speak for herself, which I just don't see her popped up right now, um, I believe is the end of June. Okay. All right. Great. 
and if it turns out that you need to finish it up in July, you know, another discussion, we'll just do that, but at least have um, Elaine uh, present with you. Does yeah. that make sense, Karen? Yes, that's fine. Thanks. We can circle back to Elaine on it. Okay, yeah, I will. Magic, waves, one to four, number 19, Mark. Right, uh, that, let's see, I have a note about that. Um, if we could put that on at the end of July, um, it should be ready for the, it's either the last meeting in July or the first meeting in August. Um, that should be ready. Marianne, uh, have you had a chance to look at the July date? The last meeting would be July 30th. Okay. And so it's the 2nd, the 16th, and the 30th. Okay, let's do uh, July 30th. It's um, kind of in the final stages of review right now. I'm confident that will be done um, in the next couple of weeks. So let's get it on. Okay, and you'll coordinate with Marianne when, when it's time about outside speakers. Correct. And number 20, Mark? Um, yeah, you know, I think that we just need to keep this under review. Uh, some of the hold on this has to do with our operators and um, making sure that they're pulled into the loop. And obviously, there's there's a number of factors at play there. Just so you know, our communications director has indicated she is with us. She's just having some internet issues. <laughs> um, so she'll coordinate. Uh, I'm sure she'll coordinate back on the other item. Um, and, and we're keep number 20 under review and then nine update on the section 97 if you want that under review or do you have a date you think for that one mark i'm sorry i was number 21 needs to remain under review oh. number okay. 20 um i believe i'd like to also have that uh be coupled with the game sense um impact report Largely because that's a, also a project that Elaine has been um, key a key player on. Okay, we'll see. Then uh, June eighteenth. And and by the way, I don't think either of these agenda would be very long agenda items. I think they're they're short sort of announcements. Okay. Okay. And we've got that's kind of a uh, an interesting day anyway because we're going to have a little bit of a break. Um, to a, right. um, okay, so let's put those two items on for the 18th then. And okay. if somehow um, that pushes you and Elaine in a, in a direction that is difficult, we'll just take it off. Okay. okay. Sounds good. All righty. Thank you. Thanks. Elaine, I'll connect with you on that. Okay, great. And then now back to Jill on the template. Um, yep, we're still under review. Okay. Good time to be actually thinking about that for the future. Okay. And then um, number 23, compliance update, that's under review. I know that's a big haul, Karen. Yes, that, and that'd be something we do after the casinos reopen, so we can keep that under review. Yeah. And then Enrique, your new England gaming market update. Uh, you know, it's still under review, but I do want to uh, talk to you and um, Kathy and maybe Karen and, uh, and Elaine offline and think about this item. Um, next steps. Okay. Yeah, next steps. Next steps on this, especially um, I'd, I'd love the input with, the, with her history of, uh, of Elaine before she leaves on this. Okay. And just so everybody, I'm sure everybody on the call, on the call knows, Elaine is not actually leaving we're very proud that she's off to harvard university at the kennedy school to um, get her master's in public administration you've seen the announcements um, and she um, is very fortunate um, but most of all deserving to be a bradford scholar um, fortunate because she um, will have all of her bills associated with her harvard education paid for deserving because it was a very competitive process and she was one of three selected for this. So she's not really leaving us. She's just going to be getting smarter. So, um, <laughs> we, um, and, I, and I think I just saw a square light up that's associated with her phone. Do you want to say anything, Elaine? 
Elaine, is that you? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't, but um, I yeah. thought I was, you're, 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 you're said, uh, uh, hopefully heading to get smarter, and I'm um, very grateful for the opportunity. So thank you. Great. So um, just because of scheduling, we did a little informal announcement, but more will follow um, publicly to again give you full credit for and 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 to make sure your send off is with the right the right player. Um, but it's an 11 month commitment and uh, we're going to um, miss Elaine terribly, but we know that um, we have, we have, we know where she lives, we know how to reach her, and we also will be working with uh, a good uh, plan for continuity of services, so. Thanks, Elaine. I just know we want we wanted to get your couple of items in for June if that works for you and Mark. Okay. Um, it's hard to believe you can get any smarter, Elaine. Really. Um, all right. Any other items for our July meetings or even back on the 18th or the 4th? Karen, have you thought of anything? No, I think I think we're good for now. We've got plenty going on. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right if i hear i'm hearing no other additional items i'll need a motion for an adjourn motion to adjourn and i second that before we have our vote my fellow commissioners do you want to say anything to all of our team members okay i just want to say we miss you all and um, stay safe, and we will have our roll call vote. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye, thank you everybody for all the work you do. Commissioner Stebbins. Missing everybody on the team, but know everybody's doing a great job, and I'll say aye. <laughs> Commissioner Stebbins, you can share any cute doggy pictures that you want anytime. He's, he's not in here with me right now. I'm not sure where he is. He's a lot smaller than Derek's dog. I do know that. <laughs> All right. I, I vote aye. We have a 5-0 vote for an adjournment. Thank you, everyone. Be safe. Thanks, everybody.